we will look at two problem examples on columns and this is the first problem example that you see on the screen and it's a practical example also so let's take a look at the problem and the data that is provided and try to understand how we do this problem so what you see over here is a column from a to c and in between you have you know one two more pins over here at b now this is a column cross section that you see if you're looking from the top this is the section x so it's a kind of an i section that you have over here now the support conditions here are important which you see over here so so the pins at a and c provide you know uh, are provided along both the directions 1 1 and 2 2 so for example this pin over here as you see it sort of uh, you know sort of protrudes through this point c over here and this point a over here and it essentially restricts you know your uh, movement about both 1 1 and about the 2 2 axis over here so it is something like this maybe so you have a pin like this so you have a you know pin which is clasped over here which restricts rotation like this and you know something like this it restricts the movement along those directions over here whereas this particular pin over here at b it is only along this 1 1 over here which is something like this so how do i represent so it is something like this over here just at these two tips at, at, at you know in the, in the here as well as over here so it has essentially no role in restricting over here but it resists you know this kind of movement over here so you see that when the column is trying to buckle about something like this it provides you know this pin kind of a support over here whereas about this one it lets it you know freely go so along the when it is bending about the 1 1 axis right about the 1 1 axis when it is bending it is only restricted by the pins at the at, at a below and c below whereas when it is trying to you know rotate about this uh, 2 2 axis that is over here this is the 2 2 axis so this rotation is about the 2 2 axis then it is restricted by both the pin at a pin at c and L, as well as this pin at b over here now you see this is a practical example where you see the this construction worker over here is trying to fix this column now after this is fixed so this is a you know very realistic representation of here you see these two pins if you have a pin over here that may be the pin at b so it restricts you know the it provides some some resistance to the translation about this axis but no resistance to the translation about the the out of plane bending that you are having over here now the problem also gives you your values of the young's modulus and also very important to note it gives you a value of sigma y and we will see why it gives you your sigma y remember is the yield stress that you have right it also gives you the i so remember that the short discussion we had that your buckling of the column is highly controlled by the i that you have over here and you see in this case the i about the 1 1 axis over here is significantly higher than about the 2 2 axis over here and you're also given the area of the cross section of the column section that you have over here and the problem also gives you the allowable load or the factor of safety that you have over here which is essentially after you find the minimum load that is required to buckle the column so there will be three you know um, uh, load cases you have to consider we'll come to that and then you divide that by three to find the allowable load that you can apply on the column so let's go ahead and see how to solve it uh, so the question essentially asks you the allowable load which you can apply on this column over here so the overall as you see in this problem we need to check for essentially three things so what are the first two things that is pretty obvious that is the buckling about the two two axis buckling about the one and one one axis over here and the last thing we need to check that whether the column due to the pure axial loading itself suppose if this column is made of a very very soft material right so in that case even before buckling the column will fail so that's why you are given this sigma y over here so let's maybe make a quick note of the three things we need to check and i'll come back to you after that So these are the three things we need to check buckling about 1 1 buckling about 2 2 and the failure by yielding so let's start with this first one over here that is the buckling about 1 1 axis now as you know that when it is trying to buckle about the 1 1 axis which is essentially if you know if you have this column over here buckling about the 1 1 axis means it was about like this so this is your 1 1 right and this is your 2 2 axis that you have over here so buckling about 1 1 means it is bending about this 1 1 axis that you have over here now as you can see that from the pin condition at b when it is buckling about the 1 1 axis you have that entire length of the column that is available so that is you know l by 2 plus l by 2 that is you know 4 plus 4 8 meters over here so let's first make a note of that one 
or this buckling about the 1 1 axis and let's see that what is the value of the uh, critical load or the buckling load that we get over here. So in this case the full length available is the total length of the column that is 4 plus 4 8 meters. Then we substitute in the formula for the critical load. Remember this is the general, general formula with the LE, the effective length. So in this case since it is a pin over here, pin over here and we have the full length available, LE will be equals to 4 plus 4 equals to 8 meters. Now if you substitute the different values which are given, you are given the value of E, the total length L is 8 meters and the value of I. Now here remember we have to take the I about the 1 1 axis because we are talking about the bending about the 1 1 axis. So ideally this I should be written as I 1 1. If you substitute the numbers this is what you will get. So if you take into account and take care of the proper units, the value of the critical load in this case comes out as around 944 kilonewtons. So that takes care of the first part that is the buckling about the 1 1 axis. Next we are going to talk about the buckling about the 2 2 axis. Now remember that when it is you know trying to buckle about this you know 2 2 axis over here, here you have an intermediate pin which causes the resistance. So you have a pin over here and a pin over here and similarly for you know this one at the bottom you have the pin over here as well. So when you are trying to buckle the effective length becomes you know thus the point between the zero bending moment the pin pin case is the you know ends where the pins are so it is going to be just this L over 2 over here. So let us go ahead and write that for the buckling about the 2 2 axis. Here it will be I 2 2. And here the length you will have is the 4 meters that is the half of this one because you have a pin supported and a pin support resisting the buckling about the 2 2 axis. If you substitute the numbers in this one what you are going to get as the critical load as a 200 kilonewton. And the last thing you have to you know worry about is this one is failure by yielding. Now we know this is the yield strength that is 300 MP and this is the area of cross section. So how do we get the force from the stress? You have to multiply with the area of cross section and if you do that the value of the yielding stress that you will get is. which you see is much higher than you know any of these ones that you see over here simply because I think it is made of a, a steel for which you have this yeah, 200 GPS so that is typical Young's modulus for steel and the load is substantially higher. Now you see among these three loads over here which is the you know load which can be the minimum load for safety is it going to be the minimum of you know these three guys over here. So let me just highlight the load so minimum of 944 and 200 and 1185. So this is the minimum load that you have but it asks for the allowable load because it gives you the factor of safety of 3. So the allowable load will be this 200 divided by 3 over here. So the maximum allowable load that you get is the minimum of these three divided by the factor of C 66.66 kilonewtons. So I hope this problem example was clear in which we had a column which was restricted at the top and the bottom about rotation about both 1 1 and 2 2 but at the center this restricted the uh, you know the uh, your your uh, buckling about only the 2 2 axis that you have over here. So that is that's why we had this uh, effective length reduced as 4 meters right. So after solving this problem example let's look at now a second example problem on the columns. <laughs> 